everybody! We are in Amsterdam now and today we have very interesting, very fascinating interview. My guest speaker spent 25 years of his life working for FBI as a special FBI agent and he was specializing in catching spies. Please meet Joe Navarra. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Joe. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. First question, Joe. You are a famous uh, expert on nonverbal behaviors, mm -hmm. but can you tell us very briefly what does it mean, nonverbal behavior? Yeah, so nonverbal behavior is about all the things that we transmit that uh, is communication, but is not a word. So your nodding of your head, the clothing that you wear, the things that we do with our hands, the expressions of our eyes, all these things are communicating in real time what we're thinking, feeling, desiring, intending, or fearing. As a species, we're very communicative, and most of that takes place non-verbally. Oh, perfect. And today, uh, it's more and more attention is put towards non-verbals. So how do businesses use non-verbal to their advantage? The problem that businesses are up against is that everybody has the same software. Everybody has Microsoft Office. Everybody has Excel. Everybody. So where everybody has the same information, there's only one way left to differentiate yourself, and that's through nonverbal communication. So something as simple as, for instance, the, the business that takes the time to clean the windows, the, the, the business that has a receptionist that is very nice and kind and warm and greeting the, uh, the people when the, they arrive, the business person who is attentive to the nonverbals of the patient or the person that they're they're dealing with, who can assess for um, their needs um, or their concerns. That's the person. That's the business that will now succeed and into the future, because this is the only way left to differentiate ourselves is how skillful we are at nonverbal communications. Okay. And I know that you are not only a world-known uh, trainer on nonverbal behavior, but also you are a very popular consultant. You mm -hmm. travel all around the world and you mm -hmm. consult big multinational companies on nonverbals. Yeah. So what is the most common request from businesses to you as a consultant? Yeah, so you know, it varies um, obviously by businesses. For instance, in the um, in, in one of my uh, consultations in uh, in Asia, one of the, um, the 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 simplest things that that they wanted is, uh, for instance, when a guest we need to mm -hmm. point to a guest in a certain direction. How do we do it? You know, well, the first thing we do is we never point with a finger because no society likes that. Mm -hmm. We always point. Uh, with the open, uh, mm -hmm. with the open, open hand, mm -hmm. and we do it high, so that visually it's 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 very dramatic. So it can be something as simple as that, and obviously there were many other things, including best practices. It could be something that, uh, for instance, a negotiator wants to know is, well, where's the best place to sit? Okay. Do I sit directly in front of the person mm -hmm. I want to negotiate with? or do I sit next to them or at an angle to them? And these are the things that in my business we, we cover because where we sit, how we sit, how we communicate often determines uh, the success of the meeting. Okay, and uh, today everybody is also concerned about impression management. So mm -hmm. we want to make a good impression. You never have the second chance to make the first impression. That's true. So how could nonverbals help us to make this first impression? So what is the nonverbal behavior of a leader? Yeah, so that's a profound question because the the fact is, is that we, we begin to affect perceptions at the first time we can see each other. So sometimes it's at the horizon, sometimes it's down the street, sometimes it's down the hall, 
Sometimes it's in the parking lot. And when we talk about perception management, it's really about, you know, you're at home, you're putting on your clothes, you're looking in the mirror, mm -hmm. and it's about what is the message that I want to send today? Well, for most of us, it's, it's one that says I'm professional. You know, that I, I groom myself, I take care of myself. It's not about who has the most expensive watch or uh, anything like that. It has to do with, in this setting, what is the message that I want to convey? And obviously, you know, in most businesses, you want to convey that uh, you're approachable. So your, your body language is one of your, your uh, you can be approached. So you walk uh, with your, your palms uh, open and down. You don't walk with your hands behind your back. That's okay. called the, the regal uh, oh, position, which okay. says, don't come near me. Uh, when we greet people, we, we greet them with the eyebrow arch, which uh, is demonstrative that we care. And then always leaders should have gestures that are smooth, but they're broad. It should be broad. Very broad, so that okay. they're not jittery. Okay, it's interesting. That okay. leaders should have very broad, very smooth gestures, um, and we find those uh, are, are better received. So. And what about the voice? What should be the voice of a real leader? Well, you know, now you're asking a question that's also profound is, well, it, it's not so much of a, of a real leader, mm -hmm. but an exceptional leader. Okay. And the exceptional leader mm -hmm. um, uses a voice that is necessary for the moment, right? So the voice changes. Mm -hmm. The voice changes when he's one-on-one, -on -one, the voice may change when a man is talking to a woman or uh, one man talking to, to three men or a crowd. The exceptional leader has to adapt because the purpose, the, the purpose is effective communication, right? Okay. And to achieve effective communication, you have to communicate in such a way that your message is perceived well. So it cannot be too high, it mm -hmm. cannot be too low, it cannot be too fast. Mm -hmm. It cannot be too demanding. Okay. It has to be just right. That's the exceptional leader. There's a lot of people that call themselves leader. That doesn't mean they're exceptional because you have to really communicate to that audience so that it's uh, received. Okay, very interesting. Joe, and could you give us some uh, advice which gestures or body language signs we should never use in business? Hmm. Well, that's, that's an interesting question. I, I think for, for, for business, you have to consider, you know, if you're a, if you're a doctor or if you're in the financial sector and, and, uh, and, and so forth. Number one, I would say you, you need to always be groomed. The hair has to be combed. You have to wear the attire that is consistent with your, 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 your business. Um, you know, would we get on an airplane if the pilot was in shorts? I, I don't think so. <laughs> well, you know, he may be he may be a great pilot, but I'm not okay. sure I'd get on the aircraft. And okay. and so we have to we have to look at the uh, the roles that we play in life. And leaders have uh, archetypal the archetype roles, and so you, you have to play that. The things that you you shouldn't do um, is, for instance, is not make eye contact with everybody that works for you. And I see a lot of people who are in senior management and they just won't even make eye contact with the people they work with. And then they wonder why the people they work with feel um, uncared for. I think that's something that's important, that we make eye contact, that we greet each other, that we speak to each other. The third one that I think is, is a big mistake is that leaders sometimes feel like they should only be in their office and leaders should be seen. The theory is eyes on, hands off. Eyes on, hands off. You need to be out there. You need to, you, people need to see you. They need to see that you're interested in what they're doing. They don't necessarily need you to be telling them what to do, but they need to see you. And we value uh, bosses that, um, that come out and, and visit with us. 
and um, so I think that's that's important also. Okay. It's very interesting. Unfortunately, the time of our interview is finishing, but I have one more very mm -hmm. important question because yes. we just touched a little bit mm -hmm. uh, the topic of nonverbals, and I know that you now you have um, a lot of uh, programs you're mm -hmm. running around the world, but unfortunately, for example, me, I tried to register for your online course, yes. but it was said, no, Genovara is busy till 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what, yeah. what are your plans for future training? So future training is it's very simple. I've with uh, the behavior company mm -hmm. and what we're going to do is do an annual uh, training event okay. uh, here in Amsterdam to make myself and my material available to uh, to a lot of people on the European side of the house, but also people from Asia. At this event uh, this week, we have people from Malaysia, we have people from the, the Middle East. And then we're also gonna uh, do one event in the United States because the numbers were just out of control. I was, I was getting more than 160 requests a year to participate. I could only take three or four students a year. To be fair to everybody who's interested in in, in learning from me, this was the only way. So next year, we're, we're gonna do it again here in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Amsterdam. We, we may do it sooner, depending on um, how things work out, but um, th this is the way going forward. And, uh, and it's nice when we can have 50, 60, 70 students at a time, and they can ask questions, and, and I'm there to answer the questions. Perfect, and Joe, Thank you very much for the interview. It was very interesting. And I think we will have you one more time, hopefully, as our guest speaker. And I can't let you go mm. without, without signature of this book, yeah. my favorite book, which everybody is saying. And actually, this book was translated to 29 languages. Could you please uh, yes, thank sign you. it for me? Yes. Thank you very much. I wish you good luck in your training in Amsterdam. Please come more often to us. <laughs>